You know that old rumor that celebrity deaths usually come in threes? Well, it seems like these days it's actually celebrity scandals. As we're fully aware, the content machine is more relentless than ever before. Every company has a streaming service and every streaming service has 400 shows in a cinematic universe that they're building up to. It can get exhausting. But sometimes there's that little peek through the clouds, that one critically acclaimed series that you love or a new character introduction that you feel might breathe some fresh air into a franchise. And then like clockwork, This sucks. I mean, there's kind of no way around how much it sucks, and it's easier to sort of close your eyes and feign ignorance and pretend that you haven't heard the news that an actor from one of your favorite TV shows or movies is a shitty, shitty, awful person. And hey, maybe it doesn't matter because you're one of those people whose consumption of media isn't impacted by this type of thing. Is that the right way to go about it at this point? Does it depend on what the company does in response? I see arguments on both sides, really, and I've had a changing opinion on it over time. But before we get there, let's talk about the three stories at play here so everyone can be caught up on what's happening. First, let's talk about Netflix's new series, Beef. Beef is an American comedy drama miniseries starring Steven Yeun and Ali Wong. I haven't watched it, I heard it's very good, but it's about two characters who are pitted against each other after a road rage incident. The cast also features actor David Cho, who has gotten in some hot water over the last few weeks. Forgive me here, I have to use this god-awful self-censor language going forward because I don't want to get age-gated, but basically some comments resurfaced that Cho made on a podcast in 2014. In said podcast, Cho detailed a story about how he, quote, successfully R-worded a massage therapist. I won't read all of it out loud, but here's a transcript of what he said. Pause to read. This does not look great, but Cho has claimed multiple times that this incident was a work of performance art and that it never actually happened. He was just telling the story to get a rise out of people in the room, sort of similar to another situation that I can think of. I didn't fuck my cat. I didn't come on my cat. I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. I've never done anything weird with my cats. I promised myself I wasn't going to make apology videos after last- Once this was uncovered, fans of the show were waiting on bated breath for both Netflix and Cho's co-stars, Ali Wong and Steven Yeun, to address the situation. That statement finally came down on Friday, and people were not happy with it. The story David Cho fabricated nine years ago is undeniably hurtful and extremely disturbing. We do not condone this story in any way, and we understand why this has been so upsetting and triggering. We're aware David has apologized in the past for making up this horrific story, and we've seen him put in the work to get the mental health support he needed over the last decade to better himself and learn from his mistakes, they said. So, people have a couple of issues with this, because the statement very much reads like the cast and crew were aware of this whole story floating around in the ether before it came to light. They're going with the motif that the whole situation was made up, and then the mention of mental health support felt a little random to throw in there because, true or not, making up a story about an essay is not exactly a mental health issue. Some people say that they should have just fired him from the show, other fans are wishing the cast would have just stayed silent on the matter and let Netflix handle it, and of course there are some people who don't think Cho did anything wrong to begin with. Here's the thing though, Netflix is so desperate for money, like unbelievably desperate for money for a number of reasons that deserve their own explanation video, and this show was getting really positive reviews and word of mouth before this whole controversy kicked off. So I have no doubt that they're going to try to continue the show on however they can, but the solidarity angle here is an interesting one when, from my understanding, he could have just been recast or written out of the project altogether. So that's the beef on beef, and now we're going to recap another story that is personally painful to me, the alleged predatory adventures of disgusting brother Nicholas Braun. As a fan of Succession, new video coming out on that soon by the way, I think HBO got incredibly lucky with how this story has played out. The show is in its last season, so no one really has to level with the what are we gonna do about Cousin Greg conundrum, although if you're familiar with his arc in this final season of the show, knowing what we know now, it is definitely a little surreal to watch. She's another tick on the chart. The disgusting brothers. Don't, don't call us that.
Nicholas Braun, who plays Greg on the show, has been one of the internet's awkward cinnamon bun boys for quite some time. However, in the last two weeks or so, allegations have come to light about Braun's behavior around women, a few of who were minors at the time of their interaction. In a now-deleted TikTok, a woman claimed that Braun attempted to lure her back to his hotel room despite the fact that she was underage. She shared photos of herself with Braun at Coachella when she was just 16 years old, though didn't provide details on when exactly this interaction took place. The woman says Braun invited her back to his hotel room. She told him she was in high school and he apparently did not care. She ultimately declined his advances, but later she found out the same day that he had had relations with someone else who she went to high school with who was also underage. Since this TikTok went viral, there have been a number of allegations on Reddit corroborating this behavior from Braun, including claims that he would use the New York City bar that he co-owns with Justin Thoreau as a place to try to pick up younger women to sleep with. A few other Reddit comments claimed that he had a similar reputation while he was in college. As of recording this video, Braun has not commented commented on any of these allegations, and I'd imagine that folks who are big fans of him are brushing it off as just rumors, especially because that TikTok had been deleted. Obviously, like, I'm still gonna watch Succession, but like I said, HBO dodged a massive PR nightmare here because he is such a big part of the show. And if all of these rumors are true, that sucks. He should do better and sleep with women his own age. And finally, we've arrived at probably one of the biggest stories of the year, the DV allegations against Jonathan Majors. Majors has been an actor on the come up for a little while now. He just starred alongside Michael B. Jordan in Creed, and he was getting started in his huge role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Kang the Conqueror. Majors was arrested back on March 25th in Manhattan on charges of strangulation, assault, and harassment. After the incident, a spokesman person for Majors began to defend him aggressively, stating that he was actually the victim in the situation and that the woman he was having the interaction with was actually in the midst of an emotional crisis. Things got really confusing when his team then released a series of texts that were supposed to prove his innocence, but really just ended up making him look more culpable in the situation because much of what was said in the exchanges, pause to read by the way, were classic indicators of a DV relationship. After this, a number of other victims came forward with similar abuse allegations by majors and are reportedly cooperating with the Manhattan DA's office following his arrest. On Tuesday, Deadline reported that majors will no longer star in an upcoming film adaptation of Walter Mosley's 2004 novel The Man in My Basement that he was also expected to executive produce. He was also in negotiations to star in a biopic about Otis Redding. He is reportedly no longer under consideration for that role either. He was kicked out of the Met Gala invite list. Hell, even the US Army won't run recruitment ads that he was featured in, so it's safe to say that no matter what happens at his court date on May 8th, he's kind of cooked regardless. However, there has been radio silence from Disney about whether or not they're going to recast him as Kang. Things get a little complicated here because he was already in Ant-Man Quantumania as the character, but like, Marvel isn't exactly new to recasting actors for much less offensive grievances. It's especially easy to do because the whole multiverse thing is still at play in the MCU now. I don't know, I don't really keep up with it as much anymore, but I would assume there waiting for the court date because it makes termination of whatever contract he has easier for them legally. So that's a recap of three men in Hollywood on their own horrifying paths of discovering the consequences of their own actions. And that's not to say that this doesn't happen with women in Hollywood as well. I mean, Tiffany Haddish and Melanie Martinez are two examples I can think of off the top of my head. And I don't know, man, I've covered allegations on this channel before. I think this is just a cycle that is going to keep happening over and over again because ultimately it's about power and having status in Hollywood. Hollywood and the entertainment world is about the power dynamics that you have over others and whether or not you ultimately choose to weaponize that. Nothing has really changed after the Me Too movement if you think about it. We still see the same stories popping up everywhere. The only difference now is that corporations are faster to respond to it publicly because the online shitstorm that comes from this stuff usually makes them look pretty bad. And that's the least interesting part of this topic to me anyway. I'm more engaged with how we as viewers of this media respond to these situations and whether or not we have any moral obligation to think more critically about the content we consume or stop putting our money behind these projects altogether. I go back and forth on whether or not it actually makes a difference. 
For example, a few months back I made a stance on not watching Dahmer because I think unethical true crime content does harm to real victims, especially because the families who were victimized by Dahmer wanted nothing to do with the series. That's a stance I still stick by, but I feel like it gets more complicated when you have the option of whether or not to engage with content like Beef or Succession that was not built with any of that real life framework in mind, you know? Like those shows were purely made for fictionalized entertainment, and these are just real world circumstances affecting the show's production after the fact. Does weaponizing my viewership or my money in this situation really matter? And I say this as a person who has been affected deeply by the predatory actions of men in general, like, I personally see myself reflected in a lot of these stories we talked about here, and the fact that it's happening to other people still enrages me to no end. But I think a lot about how we are so powerless in the face of mega corporations because they basically own all of American life and culture, to the point that the only thing we can vaguely weaponize in return is our consumption habits. It's the same reason why people are shooting cans of Bud Light with guns and pretending that they're making a real difference for whatever bigoted bullshit they stand for. I don't know, man. Life is weird. This stuff is complicated, but I'm glad that you're here. And if you've been affected by SA or DV, there are resources in the description for you down below. That's all for me this week, guys. Like I said, I had to take a little more time on my succession video, so that should be out sometime next week. But please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time.